Hello. Today, I want to talk to you all about something. Something that the Holy Spirit put on my heart near and dear. About that all of us, including, this is a must-hear message for new Christians or new born-again believers. But even for us old-timers, there's still much we can learn from this message also. This message is to do with building a foundation in Christ. Now let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you today, O oh Father, to use me as a vessel, O oh Lord. Help me to speak, teach, and preach your word. Holy Spirit, you speak, not me. You say what you want to say to the hearts of the people, O oh Lord. And help them today, Father, in Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen and hallelujah, amen. So, as I was saying before, this is a message on building up a foundation in Christ. I want us to go to Matthew 7, verse 24. And this will be Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. Say amen when you're there. The scripture says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Wow, what a scripture. To quickly summarize, Jesus is talking about two different types of people here. He's talking about the ones who listen to the word of God, who hear the word of God and they do it. So then that word stays a foundation as a chief cornerstone for the rest of their lives or for their lives because they were obedient immediately to that word. Because when we listen to the word of God, when we read our Bible even, or when we get a revelation from the Lord, anything that is some type of insight or new revelation that we get, whether it's from a preacher or God or the Holy Spirit, or even from our Bibles, whatever revelation we get, if we do not use that or put it down, put it immediately into use, then the enemy will steal it away. It says in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come to give you life and have it more abundantly. You see here that if we allow ourselves, especially as new born again Christians, I'm speaking to you new born again believers right now, maybe you've accepted Jesus, your Lord and Savior from church and then you happen to randomly click on this video and then you're like, oh, what's this? Oh, how, am I meant, how is this going to help me? I'm telling you to help this because these scriptures, these revelations, you're going to be getting many different revelations, many different understandings from the Holy Spirit, from the scriptures, because one, this is your first time ever reading the Bible. Two, this will be a point where you're heightened, where your spirit is heightened because you've properly accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So your spirit is heightened and you're in tune into the spiritual realm. Sometimes even more than us oldies, because as us oldies, we become familiar to the Holy Spirit and to God. And then we sometimes just stop listening and close up our hearts. But you, it's like, it's like someone that has been deaf for a long time and now they can hear. They can hear even the smallest frequencies or someone that has been blind for a long time and then now can see, they see all the different colors and detail that once they were not able to see, that once they were not able to hear. So it's the same with you. We're not able to hear what God was telling you. You're not able to see what the revelations and the scriptures, but now that you are, there's a warning. If you don't put those revelations immediately into use, like if you do not put this word immediately into use in your life and you do not build a foundation in your heart, like you do not memorize scriptures, like you do not pray continually every day, if you do not read your Bible continually every day, then the devil will steal these things from your heart. He will steal them. And then, what will you stand on? Buildings. There are buildings everywhere. Okay, houses, uh, office buildings, towers. But if the buildings had no floors, where would you stand? If the building was built with no floors, or if the building was built with no foundation, how would it stand? And it's the same with you. How can you stand 
if your foundation is not rooted on the chief cornerstone which is Jesus Christ you already said yes to him and you've accepted him into your heart as your Lord and Savior which includes his spirit the Holy Spirit but then that means that you cannot just lay a foundation and expect to, for the Holy Spirit to ha- be housed in there you cannot lay a foundation on the street and expect people to live there you have to build a house and those walls those bricks those stairs the furniture they're the word of god they're the prayers they're the insights they're the revelations that you get throughout your years do you know why there are many christians that you see today that are able to continually say that jesus is lord continually preach continually stay serving or why your pastor, maybe you go to a church, and why your pastor is able to be a pastor for over 20, 30 years. Let me tell you in this what now, because they have built not just a strong foundation, which they have laid on the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ, but they've also built up walls, furniture, stairs. They've built a whole mansion of word, of the word of God, of scriptures, of revelations, of insights that they've got from God, that now when the winds blow, Like it said in Matthew 7, when the winds blow, when the floods come, when the rain pours down, when the test, when the circumstances aren't looking good, you know what they're able to do? They're able to stand. They're able to stand. But if you build your foundation on the sand, like Jesus says, because there is no foundation, if you build up your foundation on a wrong place, on the place of, oh, I'm just serving God because he's, I can do whatever, I can sin. I'm just serving God because I can sin because his grace covers me and I can go to heaven, yippee. Or I'm following God because my family is doing it. Or oh, I'm following God because my parents are doing it. Or oh, I'm following God because it seems trendy or cool. Then when the, when the floods come, when the rain comes, because in the Bible it says that straight and narrow is the path that leads to salvation but wide and broad is the path that leads to the gates of hell or to destruction to eternal gnashing of teeth is it worth going to hell when you believed that you were a christian i thought that's even a worse fate than even being just a sinner that as a Christian that I would fall into hell because of one one sin here or one sin there because maybe I had a wrong belief about God and then that caused me to stumble and trip and fall to hell but if you build yourself on a firm foundation if you build yourself on the chief cornerstone which is Jesus Christ then you will not let your foot cast upon a stone. You will not let your feet even touch a stone. He says that in Psalms 91, if you're wondering where that scripture is. It says in 1 Corinthians 3.11, it says, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So no matter how hard you try, a foundation is in. A foundation of the word of God. A foundation is not a foundation unless it's built upon Jesus Christ. That is what our salvation is built upon. For for only a man who was blameless, upright, sinless, could go up on that cross. No other man can do it. He had to be fully man and fully God. Because us men, one, we get sin from our forefathers which were Adam and Eve. That's the original sin. Two, that's because we are human. And two, we sin, everyone has sinned, left, right and centre. You can look on the street and I guarantee that everyone that you see on the street has lied, even once. That everyone on the street has lied, even once. And that's, and in God's eyes, lying and then pornography or whatever that stuff is the same. It's the same tier. So, All of us are damned to hell. All of us, it says in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. So all of us are damned to hell and damned to death. That's where we all are. That's where we're all meant to be. But Jesus took that punishment for us because he was fully God. He could not receive the punishment of original sin. 
because he was fully God. Because where God is, holiness resides and there are no other thing can come into it. So because he was fully God, he had God's holiness, full holiness. God is the, the holiness is the embodiment of God. If you think about it, God is not the embodiment of love, but love is the embodiment of God. Think about that. So if holiness is the embodiment of God, then that means Jesus was fully holy. Holiness was like him. He was not like holiness. Holiness was like him. So he could not get that original sin. Two, because he was God, he could not sin. Because God and sin, if God is everything that is good, or goodness is everything that is God, then how can he sin? How can he go against? Goodness and evil cannot mix. It's like saying white and it's like saying dark and light where there is lightness darkness cannot not be present it's the same thing with God and sin so he could not sin so that he was the perfect sacrifice the one to be in our place to atone and if you're still not understanding let me give you more of a more practical example there's a judge and then there's a defendant or someone who is being on trial he has committed the crime. They know he is guilty. The jury has already said, you are guilty. And he is getting his sentencing. And his sentencing is life in prison. And then someone stands up in the audience and says, I'll take his place. I'll go to prison in life for him. I'll take his place. They have atoned for his sins because they have taken up the burden of his sins. Which was whatever he did, whatever he committed. And instead, that person is able to go scot-free, but someone else took on the burden of their punishment. It's the same thing with us. Jesus took on the burden of our sin. That's why on the cross, he said, Adonai, oh Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Because when he had taken on the burden of all our sins, think about it, every wrong thing that humanity does, Child trafficking, human trafficking, killing, murder, stealing, lying, sexual immorality, all these different things. Jesus took that all upon himself. And then God, because I told you holiness is the embodiment of God, God could not have to turn his face away from Jesus. So Jesus wasn't able to look at God. So he felt abandoned and forsaken. And he did all of that because he loves you, because he loves me. And then all we have to do, just like as in the example earlier, as the criminal, all we have to do is accept it. All we have to do is accept his atonement for us. And so to accept this atonement, all you have to do is agree and pray this simple prayer with me. And if you would like to accept this atonement that Jesus did for you, the sacrifice that Jesus did for you, I'd like you to repeat this prayer after me. Say with me now. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me. And I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty holy name, amen and holy amen. You know, one, one lost sheep has now been found. One lost coin has now been found. Your name is written into the Lamb's book of life. Amen and holy amen. Also, I recommend you reading the book of John. It's an amazing book for newborn again believers. It's, it is such an amazing book to build up, like I said before, your foundation in Christ. Remember, the devil will come to try and steal the word that you got today. Don't let him. Don't let him steal what God has planted in you. Don't let him steal the new foundation that you've started building. Because he can try and sabotage the building. Just like people try and sabotage each other and getting higher or people in sports try and sabotage each other maybe they do a foul or maybe they pull someone's shirt you know in football when they do a little shirt tug just to make the person fall to pull someone else down the devil is going to try and pull you down from a new place that you just elevated to don't let him build up the foundation build up that floor so that when so that when he tries he's not able to break through and use and don't build it upon fake preachers don't build it upon fake words build it upon 
Jesus Christ and his word. Because when we read the Bible, when you read the Bible, any other word that you hear from any other preacher, or even myself, when you hear words from me, always check it with the Bible. Because when you check it with the Bible, when you pull it up, when you line it up with the Bible, if it does not agree with the word of God, then it's false. Remember, line it up with the word. The word and Jesus Christ are your foundation. Because Jesus Christ, it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So this word is God. It's his words breathed out unto us. So it is truly what God says. So if it's truly what God says, then why don't we receive his impartation in this book and listen to it? Thank you for listening and have a blessed week.